Good morning, 92.9 on your FM dial. I, I, Going live I just I don't I don't know what to say. You know, you get that little jittery oh, when yeah. you get a man of this caliber to come on your show. That's it. Ladies Good. and gentlemen, I am giving you the man himself, Dog the Bounty Hunter. Good morning, Dog. Hello. Good morning. Thank you for that introduction. Yes, sirs. Oh, man. Talk about a, just an absolutely wonderful man of God, man. Dog the Bounty Hunter. How you doing, sir? Good, sir. How are you guys doing? Oh, we are excellent this morning, man. Um, I'm I'm cracking. They call me. My name's Dave, and that's uh, Cutter over there, as we all know, Cutter. we got a, our man Harry B. in here with us, and... Uh, just an honor to have you on the radio, man. I'm just, I'm happy we got a Colorado boy back here. <laughs> you know, I, I moved out here, and I'm just stuck by my lonesome self. So thank you for bringing Colorado back to Georgia. Yes, sir, you're so welcome. Well, thank you for having me on. It's my honor, believe me. Oh, man, excellent, excellent. Well, I mean, what is there to say? I, I mean, can, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go back just a hair bit because I've already had some callers wondering about some stuff. But okay, let's you're, do you're, question and answer. I like that. All right, so you're you're out here to do an event because you're already blown up in Georgia already because you were seen the other day yeah. at a restaurant just south of us, and everybody's like, "Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, dogs in town!" Oh yeah, yes. So so tell us about this event that you're doing in Brunswick. So we're doing a first day a meet and greet, and then the next two days we're doing. A, we set up a tent next to the meet and greet, and we're doing a a tent revival or a tent ministry. And so I am one of the four or five speakers that we've got talking about the Lord. And, of course, right now in today's time that, you know, if you don't have God, you got a problem. So we're coming down there with faith and miracles and power and... Uh, we're just very excited about coming to Georgia. Thank you. That's well, what I'm you know, talking about. October 20th through the 22nd, Brunswick, Georgia. And you've got an, well, we've got the opportunity to see you, right? We get to hang out, a meet and greet. <laughs> so, well, I mean, not us personally, but I mean, unless you invited us. But, I mean, anybody well, out there in public can come see you, right? Yes, sir. And you also are invited. Thank you. Well, awesome. oh, heck yeah. I, appreciate I know where we're going to be. we got to go to Brunswick. <laughs> Do you need some security, dog? Because I am about six foot five, 300 pounds of uh, just a fan. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you so and, much. I hope we don't need security. And I'm <laughs> five. I'm five foot ten, and I stand behind him. So, <laughs> um, so uh, yeah, I think you're safe. Yes. Oh, good, good. Well, we're going to Georgia, so I think it's safe there. Yeah, that's it. You're yes. in the Bible Belt, man. You're in the home of Dog the Bounty Hunter. I'm telling you, man. Back a few years, it's been it's over the years. The amount of dog the dog the bounty hunter episodes I've watched has to be in the has to be in the thousands, man. It was just the go to show. You would you would stop and watch it on TV, and then you, next thing you know, you watch 27 episodes of Dog the Bounty Hunter because you can't get up. It's just the most awesome show on the television. Oh, thank you. And A&E was the first one to do the marathon. Oh, yeah. With a lot of shows. So that's, that's like a thing right now from the past to the future. So, well, thank you very, very much. Oh, dude, A&E each marathon. Show, each, show, each show was live. You know, you can't say, uh, excuse me, we missed the shot. Can we tase you again? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why we have Harry. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And, of course, A&E always wanted to do the one that got away. Because as you know, or if you don't know, you got so much money per show for a budget that network does. So you got to catch them within three or four days. So God was with us, and we caught every single one. So absolutely phenomenal, man! I had a show on uh, History Channel for uh, nine years called Axe Men, and uh, it was uh, we we got to film a couple of things a couple of times because we didn't have it with you, man. You your your show was. Uh, yeah, heads above what ours was because you had to get it done. If we mess something up on there, we could reshoot it. Y'all mess something up, there ain't no reshooting, which is super hard. And people need need to understand that is the craziest thing about reality TV is being able to get that first shot. Oh yeah, we, I think we really were the only. A lot of reality shows that are called reality are not real reality. So I think we were, besides Ozzy and uh, Sharon, I think we were the second real 
reality show in America. Oh, I guarantee it, man. I guarantee it. Well, it was funny because it was crazy in Colorado. We would always be watching, you know, and you're always watching for Pueblo or Colorado Springs because everybody's like, oh, oh, did you just see? There was a dog was up in Pueblo. Yeah, he got somebody. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, dang it. I, man, I wish I was up there. Yes. <laughs> I think the best part would be is like, you know, I think he's coming to my house. <laughs> yeah. 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 You ever had anybody that was watching the television and uh, was like, I knew one day you'd come get me, dog. I knew one day you'd be here. Oh, yeah, several. And I have a distinctive <laughs> knock, you know, did, 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 did. <laughs> yes, sir. Because oh, he that, does. That, that <laughs> knock relaxes people at the door. They think it's their homie, you know. And, uh. <laughs> I, rem- I remember the first time you came to my door. <laughs> yes. Yeah. A couple guys opened the door and was like, I knew that was you. I knew I'd be <laughs> sitting in the back seat. And a lot, a lot of times they had guys, you know, I'd say, listen, if you want to ride with the cops, that's fine. And they're like, no, we. I want to hear from you. And so the, a lot of the show was the back seat ride where after I beat them down, I talked to them about the Lord and how to change their life. And I've still got about 60% of guys that call me and you know, Bosco called me that day and said, Dog, when I find you, I'm going to whoop you. And I said, why? Because he can. <laughs> and he said, because you, you ruined my life for crime, brother. <laughs> well, can, like, I, okay. can I step back a little bit? Because a lot of people don't know your history on you. And okay. you weren't always a good boy, were you? Well, I was raised Assembly of God. And uh, my father you know, uh, didn't, didn't ever do anything weird, but beat me really bad almost every other day. Cause, and so at 14, I ran away from home and 14 and a half, 15, I joined the devil's disciples, which is a sister club to the hell's angels. And at 16, I became Sergeant of arms all with a fake ID that said I was 19. Wow. And then in 1976, four of us pulled up to a house One of my brothers, disciple brothers, went in to buy some pot, and he pulled a gun on the guy, and the guy grabbed the gun, and it shot him in the shoulder. And when my brother came running out, he's like, oh, you know, that he had, he didn't have the shotgun put together right, so I cut his hand wide open. So on the way to the hospital, I said, what happened? He said, you know, I barely hit him in the shoulder. I'm like, what? So we drove back, I drove back over there on my scooter, and uh, Jerry was on a stretcher and uh, Officer Love said who was it? He said Devil's Disciples and then Love said was it Dog? And he said no so I knew I was in the clear and then the next morning Jerry passed away so mm. the radio station at 6am in Pampa, Texas said you know Dog Chapman is being sought for the shotgun slaying massacre of Jerry Oliver last night Wow! so even then I thought that's okay I didn't go in. My brother didn't mean to do it. And then uh, a year later, because of the Texas law back then, if you did not call the police, you were just as guilty as the guy that did it. And so now the law's changed today. But so we were all four convicted of first degree murder. Oh. So I, I got five years and a day. And uh, I, you know. I became warden's barber and kind of the warden's pet because I became inmate counselor. And uh, one day I told the head warden, he asked me, how come you only got a nickel five years? Did you shoot the boyfriend with your wife? And I said, no. And I told him the story. And so he, the, that night I got arrested by the, it's called the goon squad, came in my cell and arrested me, the cops, and put me in the hole for lying to the warden. So the day after that, I went to court in front of the warden, the major, and all that. And the warden said, you know, that story you told me, I said, I checked with your sheriff, Ruth Jordan. And by God, he told me the same story. Uh-huh. And he said, they said, why did you put him in prison? And Ruth Jordan, the sheriff said, well, he's going to be something someday. We had to stop him right now. Oh, so wow. The said, I know, I know that you got Judge Granger McElhaney out of Texas gave you five years in a day, but I could override him. And he said, you've done 18 months. And so your birthday's February 2nd. I would like to give it to you on that day, but on February 6th, you're out of here. Wow. And so I was released 18 months. And then 
you know, I knew right then that because of my uh, affiliation with Jesus and raised, you know, in the assemblies, that I knew that uh, you get away from God, you got a huge problem. And I never thought that I'd ever be convicted of murder. I didn't even go in the house. Yeah. You know, and so uh, God just grabbed a hold of me, and, you know, that was that. So I became a bounty hunter in 79 and started arresting people. And then about almost working on five years ago, uh, my wife passed away, and I met my new wife, Francie, who is, you know, walks in the spirit and is a very good, good Christian. Her husband passed away about six months before my wife did and we you know she has mentored me and guided me and now we're speaking and here we come to georgia (laughs) there you go man nah it's just an absolute amazing story a lot of like i said a lot of people don't know that background of you and it's it's an amazing when did you when did you start reaching out like when did you start reaching out to the guys you were apprehending and start to talk about the word of god to them well i was inmate counselor in prison so when someone's relative died the warden you know they throw you in the hole right after you you know say your mother dies they go arrest you put you in the hole because you don't care about running you're gonna go you're going to the funeral you're going to see your mom your Uh family so in those few days the warden realized that i had he called it uh the gift of gab from god so i had to go in the cells and tell him listen god did not kill you know, your your mother, the Bible says the thief cometh to kill, rob, and destroy. But what about where it says where God gives and God takes away? I said, that was Job, and he that was a misquote. And when he said that, God said, who do you think you are? Where were you when I designed the mountains and da-da-da? So I had to go in there and, t- you know, kind of basically talk him out of, uh, you know, killing everybody and running. Yeah. yeah, and so I that was the talent that I've had my whole life, and so when I started bounty hunting, the first guy I arrested, you know, told me, "Listen, man, this is burglary. I'm going to lose my wife, my children. I'm done. I'm probably going to get 20 years. Please, officer, because no one knew I was just a bounty hunter." Yeah, and uh, and I didn't let him know, <laughs> and so I told him, "Let me tell you a story about this guy that I know that was convicted of murder, and gave his life to God, and has tried to help people." And so I put him in. You know, the first time ever I put a guy in jail, the cop gave me the key and said, "Would you lock him up over there?" And so I didn't like that, so I had to though. So I unlocked the door, and locked it, and he put his hands on the bars and said. Sir, and I go, yeah, he goes, I know who that story's about. And I said, who's it about? And he goes, it's about you, isn't it? And I go, yeah. He goes, I would tell you, man, you just changed my life. That's amazing. And he got out. He got out. I kept with him. He got out in like six months, got probation. Uh, I, I lost, uh, you know, contact with him now after 44 years. But uh, I realized right then that my story or my going through what I went through would help guys just like me. You know, I, I have a certain uh, uh, of people that I am very good with, you know, and that's I call the devil's herd. And so uh, it's just incredible, very, very incredible. And then with Francie, you know, after I lost Beth, I prayed for God, please, I need a Christian woman and I need someone that will love me like my mother did and I, I need I just need this power of God with me all the time and lo and behold you know I think you go to my Facebook and see the dog and Francie story but it's an incredible story also we had no idea I'd have never dated a rancher and she did never <laughs> she did never dated a half breed Apache yeah. so uh, yeah so, <laughs> so over the years over the years, how many people do you think that you've stayed in touch with that you've arrested? Like, what what's your percentage, you kind of think, in your mind, that uh, you've well, gotten people to convert over and give up a life of crime and say, hey, I, I can do it just like dog can, and I can uh, change my life around and be a good man? Well, the first book uh, I wrote with the Ghost Rider was uh, Iperian Books, who Disney published, so they had to verify everything. 
So uh, I've arrested in a 44-year period, and that's why it's not the big number. It's the, that many years, over 10,000 men and women. So I would say at least half, uh, you know, to be, as Tony Robbins says, try to, when you tell the truth, try to underestimate it so people will believe it. Yeah. But I think it's about 65% because, you know, people knew, and, you know, I was a, a one percenter biker. I was, like, not... Maybe not evil, but I had evil thoughts and deeds. Oh. And so if I could change my life, you know, anybody can. And the reason I changed it was because of prison. You know, I'd never liked it. I, I like being a man with a woman and being a father. And guys that don't like that, go ahead and go back to prison. I know guys that actually like it. Yeah. Um, so, uh, you know, I think I can get to guys and girls. And my frantzy, uh you know, had a gangster life when she was very young, so she can deal with the same kind of people I can. My sister Katie was in prison 20 years ago in the federal penitentiary. She's coming with us. She now runs uh, Faith.TV, one of the biggest uh, Christian television. We got Miles, who's a prophet. He's coming. His friend's a preacher. So we've got... Uh, we got Miles, who, you know, prophesied, like, the future, what's going down. Then we got the guy called Joshua. He's the preacher. You know, he walks up and down the stage and, you know, kind of, I mean, he's a preacher, right? And so yeah. then we've got Katie, who is has the gift of healing and miracles. And I have seen him. I have been in prisons with her and seen miracles. And then we got Francie, who... Uh, can absolutely heal the brokenhearted. And then you got Dog, the all-around good guy, and Slayer of Demons. There you so go. We could, we're, we're, you know, if you, what I like to say, if you got young kids, old kids, family members, friends, you know, neighbors that you know that they just need that one chance and hear that one thing that they'll turn their life around. I don't mean that they come in and from then on they're Billy Graham. Right, But, you know, uh, it doesn't take a lot to get to heaven. It takes a lot to get to hell. Yes, sir. So, if you know, if you want to come yourself or bring someone, and one of us will be able to touch their spirit and absolutely change their life. I have seen it over and over. We just left Mississippi Penitentiary, and 500 men came forward. And That's gave their amazing. life to God. That doesn't mean when they went to the cell they were all punks, because these are tough. These are tough yeah. men. Tough dudes. Five hundred. Sure. Yeah, five hundred eighty women came forward. Wow. And you know, none of that means that they're now. Oh, Jesus loves me. Yes, I know they're not fifty. <laughs> you yeah. know, Damn, but brother. they watch. They watch what they say. If you say they're f bomb, you say, Lord, forgive me. You know, the Bible says well, sins that you think of are common to man. Because you lust for a woman, I was like, Lord, what do I do? And he said, turn your head, dummy. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, it, you know, we're all, we're all, the Bible says we all have sin and come short of the glory of God. But at that second, when you need him, he is there so much. Oh, yes, sir. So, uh, you know, as long as you explain that to people, people think, Oh, if I become a Christian, I gotta quit sex. I gotta quit e over. I gotta. Oh, I gotta. I gotta. I act. Come on. <laughs> you know the only thing you gotta do is love Jesus and ask God every single day. The Bible says Paul said, "I pray always." I find myself praying all the time, whether it's out loud or mm -hmm. God help me through this, or I need a blessing, or you know, help my health, help my finances, let me be a blessing to someone. Did this, and I've lived a life of crime. I was a one percenter, and you know it was fun. Oh, but yeah. I, I never have ever had so much fun in my life. I don't have to worry about is my wife going to get drunk and go with my friend? Am I going to get drunk and go with her friend? Did I wipe all the fingerprints off? Was there a camera? Oh my God! What if I would die right now? Am I going to? I don't have to worry about that. Uh, you know, I know that I, I constantly re I repent more than David did, I think. Well. And the Bible says God loved David so much because he was a good repenter. So I repent, man, so many <laughs> times a day, you know.
I think we all do. <laughs> I think sure. we all do. I have to every time I get off this radio show. <laughs> right. <so. laughs> Especially in this day and age. So real quick, dog, yeah, if you yeah, can, true. can you what yeah. what what is your most um the one person that you brought in that meant the most to you? Is there one person that you were just like, All right, I have I have done it right now. It was there a bad guy or a or a guy that you turned super good or who who is your best bounty in your opinion or well the you know there's several thousands that only I could capture you know cops look for them for months years and I did but the most significant the one that uh, brought me into the limelight uh, Martin Sheen and the Osbournes uh, and Tony Robbins actually got me said this guy needs to be on TV but the one that brought me into the limelight in America was Andrew Stewart Luster, who was Max Factor's great grandson, and he was convicted of 87, 89 counts of rape, and then he bolted at sentencing from California, Ventura, to Mexico. And uh, every bounty hunter, every cop, every he was the top FBI most wanted. Every single person, I had worked for Tony Robbins as a guest speaker. Uh, from 1980, and in his book, Awaken the Giant Within, he wrote about me that I, you know, I had arrested a thousand some people then, and so there were no bounty hunters, and all of a sudden, you know, Tony Robbins' book come out, so everybody started being bounty hunters, and PIs went to bounty hunting, and, and so Andrew Luster was the number, once you caught this guy, you had the bragging rights to be the best in the world. And so it took me 62 days, and I arrested him in Mexico, and then of course I got thrown in jail with my kid. <laughs> I, I don't mean to. Boys. I don't mean to laugh. It's just you were all over the news <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> when this one went down. Yeah, thank you, Jesus. Martin Sheet called me, said, "I'm gonna cry." He said, "The dog is no longer a canine. It's you." <laughs> <laughs> he said, "They're gonna make calendars about you, doggy." Oh I'm yeah. Like, they, they still have it, but so that was the most significant because I think that you know eighty seven, eighty nine, whatever it was, counts a rape. That's a predator. Like, come on, yeah, yeah, that's a predator. Yeah. It doesn't need yeah. to be nowhere around us. Now, now, can I let no. the dog out of the bag, so to speak? And uh, you got a podcast coming out pretty soon. Yes, sir. It's called a dog cast, though. All right, tell us about so it. We're gonna we're gonna talk about well. We're going to talk a lot of a lot of different subjects. The best I'm at is crime, as far as deter it, how to stop it, what kind of punishment you need, what works, what doesn't work, how you find someone. So I have a you know there's a lot of things that uh, different police departments won't share with the public because they're jealous. They want to catch the guy themselves because they want to get elected again. Yeah. So there's a lot of things that we're going to talk about uh, as far as how not to be, you know, everything about crime you could imagine. And I met a sheriff here in Florida the other day that started in 1979. And I thought I was the oldest law enforcement guy <laughs> in the world. And he started before I did. And because I started actually in 1970, the end of 79. But I thought, wow, this guy so... He, once you, the experience that I have had over 40, what is it, 44 years, has made me the best. Not because, ah, dog's the best, but there's no one else besides that sheriff that I know of that's been in law enforcement that long. No one's ever arrested 10,000 people. How You know how many people I had to interview to get the 10,000 parents, neighbors, <laughs> girlfriends? Yes. So, I, you know, you think Geraldo Rivera's good at interview? Brother, I am better than him. So, uh, <laughs> so I, you know, we're going to do that. And then there's a lot of questions about biblical stuff. You know, what is, what is like right now in Israel? What's going down? Or what could you do? So... Uh, I take the stuff straight from the scriptures. We go back into the Greek and and Hebrew meaning of stuff and explain it, you know, very slowly and then challenge people to do it. And so I, the dog cast is going to be, and then we're going to, you know, it's it, I'm, it's going to be different. I like to be different than anything else. So it's going to be different, say, than Joe Rogan. But I want to say, uh, you know, Joe, I'm coming after your title. And, and <laughs> yeah. I don't, 
Wait a minute. We are about- we are too. Wait a <laughs> hold on a minute. <laughs> Let's Can't- get him on the line. I don't care about I'd rather sometimes be number two because number two is constantly putting pressure on number one. All yes. nice. Yep. So yep. it's really when you're number one, man, I've been that before the show and this and that, and you're under so much scrutiny. Well, dog care, dog care. Yep, you know, yep. dog, dog, I trained my, I trimmed my mustache the other day above my lip, you know, because I saw this guy that was handsome. I go, oh, wow, look at that. And I trimmed my mustache. They're like, yeah, what a dog do? Get lip injection. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, well, I'm like, I, no, I, I'm like, no, where do you get that at? <laughs> I have to be honest with you, though. Kraken all morning is dying to have your hair. Oh, yeah. So Brother. if you ever mm. shave your head for some reason, oh, please God. send it to Kraken. Oh, yeah. He <laughs> is just, he is, yeah, yeah. Dude, I'm telling you, I tried, well, to, buy, I tried to buy the Oakley sunglasses to look like you. I tried to grow the hair out to look like you. Yeah, I was like, I was like, this is the man. But then I wore my shirt unbuttoned to my belly, and people just laughed at me. I couldn't be as cool as you. No way. Oh, I could. My, my uh, Francie's different than that. And so Francie, she tried to maybe look like a uh, Catholic priest. She's like, <laughs> I, and I'm like, I am not buttoning it above you. You're buttoning your shirt right now. <laughs> Oh my God! I can't even breathe, Francis. It feels like a rope around my neck. Dude, I haven't. <laughs> I haven't had sleeves on a shirt in 25 years. All right, so I'm with you on that. Yeah, but I'm telling you that button up the shirt stuff. She <laughs> put an end to that. Well, brother, we got a we got a head on, and we appreciate you so much being on the radio with us. It's such an honor, man. Uh, unbelievable. Hopefully, we can get you back on there again. Hopefully, you we'll gotta, see you, you on. Gotta stop by next time you blow through town. Stop by, hang out with us, do a four hour show because we could just <laughs> we could sit here and talk to you forever. That's it, man. Yeah. Well, let me know you got my connections because I would love to do that. Oh, yes, sir, awesome. man. We'll get, we'll get some call in coming in, and we'll do hook up with you and me we'll do the dog cast and your cast and we'll cast them all out that'd be awesome man this day and times man we need to explain how important our lord and savior jesus christ is more than anything on this planet so you're you're leading the way sir you are absolutely leading the way amen thank you sir really you guys thank you so so much no the pleasure's all ours man thank you well we are like brothers from the same kind of mothers so thank you well i don't know you haven't you haven't seen kraken yet (laughs) his mom's very special (laughs) <laughs> Anyone that could drop that thing out, holy cow. Oh, <laughs> All right, so go check out Dog, Brunswick, Georgia, October 20th through the 22nd for a tent revival and get to meet and greet them right there. Friday, 7 p.m., Saturday, 7 p.m., Sunday, 11 a.m. And you're going to have merchandise, right? Yeah. Yeah. Right, I just yeah, may have sure. to sneak over there and get a shirt. That's it, man. Yeah. Oh, uh, thank you. We got, we got books and. You know, we hit uh, number one on the New York Times bestseller. I didn't know what that meant. And the guy called me and said, you hit number one. I go, what does that mean? He goes, your book goes on sale for half. I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. That's not what I want. <laughs> so and Francis got a bunch of merch that, you know, shows people that that you walk with God, you know. Awesome. Uh, that, and that's good when you see that in the store. When a robber sees that, I believe in Jesus. I guarantee you he's a little bit less likely to rob you. Yeah, very, very true, very true. Dog, thank you so like much, it. man, from the bottom of my thank heart you guys. for allowing us to speak with you this morning. Absolutely phenomenal. Yeah, love thank you, brother. You. Love, love you, brother. Love you, brother. You take care, and uh, we'll talk to you definitely soon. Hey, hey dog, thank can you, you tell guys. Can you tell our co-host, Harry, like say hello, Harry, and make his world? Can you, can Harry, you? this is Dog the Bounty Hunter. God bless you and be safe. Aloha. Hey, <laughs> amen, brother. You're awesome. <laughs> Appreciate Thank you, you, dog. Thanks, brother. Bye-bye. Aloha, brothers. See you soon. Yes, sir. Yeah. Bye-bye.